are you guys ready for the dawn of a new day, a new day in which almost everything changes and it happens with luck and magic and miracles and healing and even bizarre, mystical, unconditional love events. Well, I am. <laughs> and I do think that's a lot of what this beautiful new moon at two degrees of Libra on September 25th, which will unfold in the two weeks that follow, is bringing all of us collectively and individually in our sky. And some of this beautiful flow and healing will happen in relationships, but also in the area of our lives where we have a lack of balance. So we're gonna talk about all signs and also a little bit generally about how this may affect the entire population of the world called mundane astrology. First, who am I? Just in case you landed on my channel for the first time and welcome if you are here for the first time. Um, I'm Lori Lothian, you know, and I'm a sky reader and I use the codes of Hellenistic astrology and Babylonian astrology to decipher the true stories your sky is telling you about you and your life. And if you are intrigued by the idea of being a sky reader yourself, guess what? My eight week course in intro astrology teaching you to read your own natal sky and the sky of those you like around you too just for fun um starts in the middle of october there is a wait list we're about 60 people on the list but i will close uh the cap the number of people who can sign up i'm just deciding what my limit will be i don't want it to be uh, have a lack of intimacy you get a lot of high touch one-on-one -on -one contact with live group coaching calls with me modules are all um dropped into the Padaya teaching site and we teach these classes live. So this is not like you're going to have home study time. This is live with me. You have forever access to the teachings. We have a Facebook group, etc. So come check out Sky Reader in the description box below. Get on the wait list. I'm recording this video for you on September 16th or just FYI. The course will start in the middle of October. So if you catch wind of this video before mid-October, get on that uh, on that wait list. I'll probably open the shopping cart for enrollment, so to speak, at the very beginning of October once Mercury leaves retrograde on October 2nd. Okay, so well, let's talk about the sky. And I've got a lot of other things down below. Readings with me, uh, free products, how to cast your chart by yourself, the deep dive meaning of the houses PDF. Grab all that stuff below. I love giving away educational content. All right, so guys, let's go ahead. And I guess I call you guys. It's, it's one of my phrases. Hey, guys. Because um, people say, don't call me guys. Well, I just use that word. So what I want to say, first of all, I want to talk about this idea of Charaklo. You know, the name Charaklo or Haraklo actually means graceful spinner. And it's interesting because she's sitting in the sky right now at four degrees of Aquarius. And she's back in Aquarius. I mean, she's in Aquarius um, um, since 2021. Now, she was discovered in 1997. She's huge. She's called a centaur body. And she's, I think, the largest asteroid or centaur body discovered in our sky in 1997. And she, she exists between Saturn, the god of reality, structure, um, the time ma space matrix and Uranus, you know, the, sky, the big sky god full of alternate dimensional reality and UFO. So she's kind of in that in-between space. And it takes her about 62 years to go around the entire Zodiac. And, you know, when I was born, she was conjunct my ascendant. And she's coming back to my 18 degree ascendant in Aquarius, 16 to 18 degrees, depending on which chart I use for myself. Um, and I'm having my Characlo return because I'm 60 years old. And so this energy is in your sky somewhere. And it's kind of fun. If you want to check out that asteroid in your chart and go to astro.com to use her asteroid extended chart menu, her number is 101.99. If you don't want to search for her, you can just put that into the extended chart selection under asteroids and go find out where Charakla, this woman, uh, a wife of Chiron, the great healer sits. Now, she wasn't just the housewife of Chiron, okay? She was a sea nymph who then could transmute and transform into a centaur, which is a body of a horse and a human mixed together. She was known to uh, be extremely unconditionally loving. And she she was kind of like, um, she mentored, um, Chiron mentored Achilles, but she foster raised the great hero Achilles, for example. Um, so she's got this big motherly disposition and this unconditionally loving, compassionate energy, apparently, according to the Greek mythology. Um, you can also look at her for the in words of in miracles and protection and magic and divination. And so I, I'm bringing all of this up because she is in the almost near exact, like a two degree differential trine to the beautiful Libra new moon on the 25th of September. And she's doing the air trine from Aquarius. In the all signs part of this reading, we will talk about how she's playing a role in your life because of the seed of something new that's being planted. With her help, she's really supporting this with a flowing lucky trine. Now, the other interesting thing about it, she worked alongside Vesta and Athena, but Vesta as well. Now, Vesta is like a 
the priestess who worked in the temples, um, uh, Hestia Vesta, kept the sacred flame of Rome alive and dedicated her life to doing that and for, forego, had to forego childbearing, had to forego um, having a, a husband for like 30 years and finally retired at like age 36 or so, and then was given great power and wealth and ability to be independent and wander the streets of Rome without an escort as a female and to hold land. These are powers that women didn't have in Rome but she did okay so there's a sort of powerful feminine devotional priestess nun quality to Vesta now I'm bringing it up because this moon after it leaves Libra and travels through the sky will have a hookup with Vesta Saturn in Aquarius okay that's where Characlo or Haraclo is sitting and that will be around the 5th and 6th of October and in each of our lives this is something to do with basically if it's a new moon in Libra it's about balance it's about major life decisions maybe it's about one-on-one uh, -on -one committed relationships and as she comes around the moon after meeting with uh, the sun and continues around her journey around the 5th and 6th of October, she will meet with Vesta and Saturn. It kind of has a feeling to me of like, how can you make concrete, tangible and real Saturn something to do with love, partnerships, harmony and balance in your own life? And so we're going to look to that part of the story in all signs as well, knowing that this new moon is germinating a seed that may show you some directionality around, of course, the 5th and 6th of October. And the other thing I want to mention is this, is that the, I don't always use Sabian symbols, guys. Like I sometimes like to use them. Lately, I've been getting back into them. And the Sabian symbols are channeled information about each of the 360 degrees of the zodiac. And like in channeled way back, I think in the 1940s or 30s or something. And there are always these little tight Zen Cohen phrases. They're just like one-liners, like, you know, the sky is blue, a, a bird flies, you know, that kind of thing. And this particular Libra two degrees is, and you round it up with Sabian symbols to three degrees of Libra in order to actually check the numbers in the you know online databases is interesting. The words are dawn of a new day, everything changed. So I, it's a new moon. New moons are about new beginnings, dawns of something new, right? And of course, six months from this new moon at the full moon that'll happen in Libra, we're going to experience a fullness of what the new seeds are that we're germinating now. I love this energy. So the Chericlo piece is really intriguing me. Um, Pam Gregory, a British astrologer, talks a lot about Chericlo. It's one of her go-to asteroids. She's really into it. And I was never really into it, but here's the deal. In the description box, I'll put a link to a great article from the website foreverconsciousness.com all about Chericlo. And there's certain Chericlo ages, you know, and one of them is around 16, 17, and 31, and 32, and then 62-ish, where we're coming into contact with the Chericlo squares and oppositions to our natal Chericlo, right? So those are ages to go back in your own life if you want to get the Chericlo vibe. It would help, of course, to check your chart and see where she was when you were born. All right. So we're going to do all signs. Do I have anything I want to say about the general collective? And don't forget, if you're new here, please like and subscribe. And if you hit the bell, you get notified when I do something. I put like 20 videos up a, uh, a month, including every sign gets their month ahead personal forecast video. So if you like that kind of stuff, please, please uh, sign up to follow me. Uh, I'm going to show you what the sky looks like. All righty. And there's that new moon at two degrees of Libra. You can see that it's lorded over by Venus. She's the host, that's her house, and she's hosting the new moon. She's sitting with Mercury, and she's in a sign of her debility, okay? She doesn't really, she doesn't groove with the detailed pernickety, persnickety, perfectionistic Virgo energy, really. She wants to be exalted in Pisces, and she could be more lofty and over the top. So she has to be really kind of grinding into the details here. She's not so crazy about being fallen, but that's just where she is. And she's sitting with Mercury on the new moon. So she has an aversion. She really can't see or cooperate or intersect or help the new moon she's doing her own thing she's a separate story but mercury is sitting with her and mercury venus can be news information and they are conjunct the new moon out of sign okay but by degree they are in a conjunction 
And so, you know, you might find that some of this moon has, especially since the moon is kind of like the meth. Think of the moon as like the person who goes, the gossip in the neighborhood, it goes door to door to door to door, talks to everybody, all the planets, and then brings all the news to everybody. That's a quality of the moon. And the moon was last chatting with that retrograde Mercury, right? Before moving into the new moon phase. And it, literally the same day of the new moon, before the moon becomes new around three in the afternoon Pacific time on the 25th of the the month of September, there was a sense that the moon was chatting with Venus and then with Mercury and then bringing this to this new beginning. So themes to do with money and love and messages and communication and details. And um, even, yeah, those things are also slightly embedded within this moon. Okay. So keep that in mind. Um, and then the other thing I want to point out is that, you know, as, as the moon went to chat with Venus, she was forming this trine to Pluto. And that is like, that's Venus on steroid power. But when it comes to love, it's profound love, deep love, um, excessive love, extraordinary love, potent love, uh, you know, earth-shaking love, um, obsessive love maybe, but it's a trine, so it's more positive. So I just kind of think those themes are all in the backdrop of the moon, right? They're somehow embedded in the background. And the foreground, though, is the Characlo story. I cannot draw Characlo in the software that I have, but just know she's sitting over in Aquarius. She's sitting at this, the second, no, the fourth degree of Aquarius. So clearly that's in a relationship to the moon who's moving into contact with Characlo like within the same day of this new moon. And Vesta is sitting with Saturn. That's that concrete love, tangible love, enduring love, um, fire of love, energy. And, you know, it's an interesting thing because the sacred flame is devotional. So I could say devotional, concrete love. And the reason I keep saying the word love is that I do know with Cherico here, unconditional love and compassion and magic and miracles. And she's very shamanic. She shapeshifts as well. You know, there's a lot of cool shit going on here that it's because it's a Libra new moon, right? I mean, let's just face it. It could be your business partner, but nine out of 10 times, it's your one-on-one -on -one contacts. Usually it represents your seventh house in, you know, tropical Zodiac, Aries first house opposite seventh house Libra. So there's definitely something going on there to do with your primary love stories. And finally, Jupiter is opposite the moon, and that's not always a bad thing. He's retrograde going back over old ground, and he won't even come back into Aries in direct motion, really, like, you know, because he's going to retrograde into Pisces shortly on October 28th. He won't even get back into direct motion movement through Aries until December 20th. But it could be that as he's retrograding here, opposite, right, this, um, energy of this new moon, you might want to go back in your life to things that were happening when he was in direct motion in this part of the sky. And that would have been in the month of May. Okay. Let's say the last two weeks of May, 2000, 2022, because he's going back over some old territory that he's already stomped over. Let's say mid May through to uh, the latest, the first week of June, but I'd say mid-May. So mid-May, first last two weeks of May, what was going on in your life? That's where Jupiter is going over old ground. And this new moon is trying to seed something, right? New seeds. And Jupiter's like, hey, Jupiter's lack opportunity. Jupiter is Santa Claus and fairy godfather. No matter which way you slice it, oppositions don't mean he's going to do, cause harm, right? He, you could find yourself having luck that is lazy, because, you know, the moon is like, I want to chill. And you may find yourself having opportunities that are excessive or over the top and overwhelming. That could be the oppositional energy. On the other hand, you could just have a very powerful en entrance of some very significant opportunity, luck, expansion, growth, faith, hope, and optimism that follow on the heels of this moon and can last for the two weeks, right? September 25th until the full moon around the 9th and 10th of October. All right. So I hope that made sense to everyone. Um, for the collective, anything I want to say? I don't know. Venus is still hanging with the star of female mourners, Alcade. I think that could be about the death of the queen. I, I talked about potentially big royal stories coming into the sky in my Virgo, in um, Virgo, Pisces, Venus and Virgo video. Go check it in my description box under the playlist for current transits. And I've been portending the death of Queen Elizabeth in many other videos this year. I don't know that the female mourners is just that, but this energy is something the moon was connecting with before the new moon. And don't forget, there's a healing, unconditional, loving, compassionate balm that comes with this moon. So if there's something that you are healing 
that you're mourning or that you're sad or that you has brought you grief. This is a healing moon about the places where you've experienced mourning in your own life. And so I'm just, that's what it looks like to me. All right. And, uh, and then of course, I do think that, that Jupiter will bring some lucky breaks as well regarding the ability to heal things that have felt emotionally very difficult for you and even broken love stories, okay? Because Venus is the goddess of love or grief and sorrow around broken money and love stories. All right, let's get rolling and do the all signs storyline. So first of all, um, I normally start with Aries. I think I'm gonna continue with that, um, but sometimes I do wanna mix it up. Do I wanna mix it up? No, I'm gonna keep with the program. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, I just feel like when I start with Aries, people know where I'm at and they're anticipating the next sign and they don't quit listening to the video because they think that, you know, if I started with Pisces that I'm at the end of the whole thing. All right. So Aries sun, Aries moon, and especially rising sign. Let me say this before I begin. Everybody, everybody check your rising sign as the most accurate. Then you can listen to the sun assignment as, as, as because the sun can represent your purpose or your career directions or your soul's ambitions for meaningful purpose in life. And the sun, the moon can represent maybe how you feel and your emotional set points in the two weeks that follow this moon. Um, if you don't know your rising sign, please cast it and use whole sign houses. Uh, and I have a free video in my description box showing you and teaching you how to do that with free online software. Okay. At astro.com. So let's start again. Aries sun, Aries moon and Aries rising sign. So guys, this is your, um, moon of significant love relationships. Sometimes it's also collaborative business partnerships. And you're coming into a new seed being planted here. And this is, you know, for me, I'm an Aries sun and moon. This is very true. I'm co collaborating with another astrologer on a course that I'm teaching. And it could very much be this September 25th. We really get the collaborative juices rolling and the new thing is seeded as we, you know, say launch the course to the world, that kind of thing. But also it's about love and it's about committed, monogamous, faithful, enduring love stories. It's about the vows we make, the contracts we make for love. That's the seventh house. And so here we have a new contractual seed, a new beginning could be a new level of a commitment in a very healing, unconditionally loving relationship vibe. Thank you, Chericlo, who is loving up this new seed of new love or existing love going into a stronger level of commitment. And she's loving it up, Chericlo, from over in the 11th house of cosmic and karmic rewards, of good spirit, of luck itself, especially financially, I could say that one of the other things that may happen is a, a partnership of some sort can bring financial flow and luck to the lives of Aries people in the two weeks that follow this moon, reminding us that broken love and broken money stories can be healed by this charcoal infused new moon. And with Venus in that trying to Pluto as the Lord of the Lunation, wow, like where are you powering up as well? Significant financial gains in your career, 11th house, as well, where Chericlo is, as well as just pure power in your career zone. So I really love this vibe for you. And Jupiter wants to bring luck to everything he touches, the golden lucky horseshoe four-leaf clover opportunity dude and he's in the house of you you make your own luck go back to may the middle of may last year to the end of may what were you up to that's that's where he's retrograding the same degrees are active i was actually creating my sky raider course at the time which i taught in the summer so it makes a lot of sense because that's the course that i'd be i'll be launching with another astrologer co-partnering on some of the modules with me um and that's what's involved in some of this for me as an aries sun I want to also note that around the 5th and 6th of October, you're going to find yourself kind of making concrete and enduring fundamental and tangible outcomes regarding the themes of love, commitment and relationship and partnerships and collaborations. And you're going to do that when that moon travels around to the Vestal Flame and opens up another level of the narrative. Now, what I love about it, of course, as I mentioned, that Characlo herself loved to work with Vesta and she's in the house here with Saturn. So there's a, almost a harmonious thing about what are you sacredly going to devote yourself to in partnership and in, in love and in ways that have to do maybe with, um, oh, 
vows and oaths and agreements and contracts. Now, there's an aversion between Vesta. Oh, sorry, no, there isn't. It's a flow. It's a trying. What am I saying? So I kind of want you to think about, did you make any contracts, vows, and agreements at all uh, back in mm, the last couple of weeks of May? Because those are also maybe dovetailing with what's going on here on October 6th and 7th. Now, I'm going to continue, but I need to get more water because I ran out. And if everyone watches my channel, they know I'm an absolute fiend for a lot of water. <laughs> so let me get more water. I'll just pause the recording and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Well, I decided to get some beer. <laughs> oh my God, don't even ask, okay? Um, this is called uh, Dandy Brewing Company, Brett Lager, Canadian, microbrewery, fa fancy small bat shit. Uh, hill in a butcher hauler um it is strong beer six percent alcohol i didn't know that and it says um name for the backwoods form okay blazing new trails being yourself not compromising all dandy trails that we admire in loretta lynn name for the backwoods farm she grew up in this golden lager with a touch of haze was lagered on something for three months, bringing forward a complex aroma of stone fruit and farmhouse funk, giving way to a note of light spice and fruity elf esters, finishing with that classic Brett character. Well, anyway, there you go. So guys, I don't really drink beer, just FYI, but I had this hankering for a beer today. And so I decided to go for it. And I think it's a little hair of the dog because I had a little bit of a party with my daughter the night before last night and drank too much red wine and as everyone who follows my channel I'm very di full disclosure I'm writing a book called the wine lover's middle way and it's my own life lesson to learn to love wine in moderation and when I say too much wine I can get a hangover from like the, like two and a half to three glasses right I'm not drinking bottles bottles of wine all right enough about me <laughs> let's get going back to you guys all right and by the way full disclosure number two if you don't like the way I do my channel, just leave. I talk fast. I have four planets and Aries in my third house, okay? And I always said this before, um, you know, if, if you don't like my personal style, you don't have to be here. All right, trolls, go away. Number two, Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. Let's get you up here. There is a enchanted, lovely moon, a new dawn, a new, uh, with the gray spinner, Chericlo, the new dawn of something, a new beginning for you in your third house. I mean, your sixth house and your sixth house is the house of work, health and health routine, sickness. Some of you Tauruses are going to have a dramatically healed version of the daily work habits grind, the office space vibe, or something to do with your body and its health. And because Chericlo was the wife of the healer, the great healer Chiron, and she was also a healer, this is like you could have magical, like incredible, powerful healing turnarounds in any ailment that has been plaguing you, you know? I also love this idea that Chariclo is in your 10th house, bringing very profound work healings to the story. Your 10th house is a house of the work a day, your work career space. And so expect some major purpose, career, uh, ambition, success, healing energy flowing from the workhouse and the work habits and the job space to the career space, because this two week moon that follows this is going to offer that to you, especially look to October 5th and 6th, when the moon will hit that Vesta flame in your 10th house. And this could look like the out picturing of a tangible reward financially, a tangible outcome around being appreciated by a superior, getting a job raise or getting a promotion or something positive, definitely going on. But it's a very healing vibe. It feels like you, you just feel like this is like, if you thought you had broken money as stories regarding your career path, this could heal them. Uh -huh. Next. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, Jupiter opposing this moon isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is coming from a deeply psychological and spiritual house. The 12th house is a liberation house, a psychological house as well, spiritual liberation, moksha, and often involves things that are in your, buried from your personal viewpoint. Like as a Taurus, you can't see them, right? So Jupiter, your 12th, I mean, when that happened to me, I was like, I was like, went through a huge period, period of spiritual awakening for me, okay, when Jupiter was moving through my 12th house. So you may be going through a kind of vibe in the two weeks that follow the moon of spiritual enlightenment, spiritual awakening. Um, and you may also find that the energy here is about 
um, finding ways and opportunities through teachers or guides to heal self-sabotaging, self-undoing and addictions, especially addictions. So my daughter's a Taurus son and she's getting off the nicotine vape. And this is going to be a moon on September 25th that can turn those kinds of things around dramatically. If you've been struggling with any kind of sense of um, failure, self-defeat, uh, self-sabotage, and, and, and challenges and broken money and love stories, I do like the healing vibe because I do want to point out that the moon was talking with this Venus in Virgo and this Mercury in Virgo just before she hit the sun. So she's bringing messages from Venus, the goddess of love and money in the house of romance and independent business enterprise and money luck. And Mercury, marketing, merchandising, but also messages and also gamesmanship. And so things like uh, lottery tickets even. So, I mean, not to be too specific, but some Tauruses might have a win in something to do with speculative and winning things in the two weeks that follow this moon. With Mercury retrograde, maybe there's an old ticket under your bed that you bought a long time ago. <laughs> you pull it out and you take a scan and it wins. All right, keeping on with the narrative of, you know, I do think that with Venus trining Pluto, sort of baked into this sky at the time of the new moon that you're going to experience a real intensity and power around romantic love some of you Tauruses may find this challenging in a way because it's well you're an earth sign so it flows to you but we're going deep here in something kind to do with love now Pluto Venus can be kind of an obsessive love story, but also a profoundly deep spiritual life-changing energy. And all of a sudden, this moon in the two weeks that follow will bring this to your story. If you're single and you meet somebody in the two weeks following this moon, could be in the workplace, by the way, or career space, then you're going to really, really enjoy the intensity of this relationship. And if you are somebody who is with somebody already, I think this can really up-level the, the energies. And back to the October 5th and 6th to finish up, it definitely looks like a raise or a promotion because you've, you've got a lot of support when the moon is conjunct of uh, Saturn and then the Vestal Flame on the 5th and 6th of October as it flows in harmony over to that earnings and money space. So there's a good deal of, there's a good chance there's a money breakthrough for you guys coming from this new moon healing broken love and money stories. I think that's all I have to say. I don't want to be too short, but I can't like see any other sky stories worth mentioning. Enjoy this new dawn. Gemini, sun, moon, rising sign. And by the way, in case you're wondering what time I'm drinking beer, Gemini is like almost six o'clock my time. So it is the end of my work day. Um, this is not a morning beer. <laughs> Gemini's. And my progressive ascendant is in Gemini, so I do relate to you right now. The new beginning, the new moon is happening in your fifth house and a crow landed on my balcony for you. So we'll talk about the archetype of crow for you. And this is about the new beginnings with the relation, relationships to a lover, your children, um, your independent business enterprise, your inspired muse for creativity. Now, honestly, a new beginning with a child here can also be a new child. Like if you or your partner can conceive, right? who doesn't matter who has the uterus this can be a conception signature so in the two weeks that follow the moon the new dawn the new day the healing and the luck and the magic and the graceful spinning of charcoal could spin a baby into your story um the other one is new fresh love now if you are single as a gemini rising this moon can bring a new love to you however i would point out that the moon went through a conversation with venus the goddess of love and money and then mercury in the fourth house before the new moon was seated so it could be new love close to home right or in your homeland or in your childhood home or near the home that you grew up in or in the area of your homeland okay keep all that in mind for some of you gemini risings it can be an activation of of a, a new fresh day in an existing relationship as well. Um, with this trine from Venus to Pluto, you know, going on at the time of the moon, this, this is telling me that the kind of love that can be arising here is an incredible intimacy depth. Like Pluto in the eighth house is talking about the forbidden topics, you know, or, or relating at the deepest level of intimacy sexually and emotionally. Technically, the eighth house can be a kink and a, you know, sort of bondage house and that kind of sex as well. But it's a trine to Venus. And if there's a little bit of light, you know, BDSM going on in a relationship with you in the two weeks that follow the moon, it's an all good thing. Um, Venus and Pluto basically are, you know, in this kind of a relationship, uh, the goddess of love with the goddess of the underworld, willing to go into, especially the eighth house, 
the 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 uncomfortable forbidden zones with intimacy. So look for a depth and a deepening of intimacy sexually and romantically and and just that's what's going on here, all right? It could also bring you money to do with home and real estate and the new moon could seed it from the house of money luck. So could you have a money luck breakthrough that allows you to make some powerful decisions around finances regarding rent, leases, buying, selling, purchasing a home? Possibly. If you look to October the 5th and the 6th, that's when that moon will travel all the way around to the vestal flame at the top of the sky, sitting with Saturn. And that vestal flame, that sacred flame of de uh, devotional energy, bhakti energy in the house of God, will be activated in, a, in its flowing trine, right? Uh, and Characlo is sitting up here as well at four degrees of Aquarius. And so I think around that time, around the fifth, sixth, seventh of the month, you're experiencing an incredible opening to do with the way this romance or this pregnancy or this independent business enterprise or something with your children is going to become extremely meaningful. Now, at a very practical level, this could also be around this. 5th, 6th of October, planning a trip with a child, planning a foreign lands journey with a beloved uh, romantic person in your life, all of that. And if your own independent business enterprise involves legal matters, court cases, visas, or publishing, a lot of power to you around the 5th and 6th of the month. And Jupiter in an opposition from the 11th. Well, he's a fairy godfather in a fairy godfather house. This is Jupiter in the house of his joy. That's a Hellenistic concept. He's happy. He's joyful. He's extra puffed up here. And he's looking across at that moon and he's like, okay, what favors do you need? <laughs> like manifest away. Um, in Vedic astrology, manifestation belongs to the fifth house. And Jupiter in the 11th is dispensing pennies from heaven, windfalls, favors from a very a karmically rewarding space in the sky. So, I mean, I think a lot of Gemini rising are going to really luck out here. And then lastly, you know, Mars is supporting your ambitions, your drive, your focus, your decisions to level up in terms of all of the things we just talked about, and especially around the sixth, seventh of the month with that trine to the moon, Vestal Flame, and Uranus. You're making some powerful decisions around ninth house matters, and some of it will be travel, book publishing, teaching, and some of it will be deeper and more soulful, and, you know, the house of God. You know, can't put your finger on, on God and make it like one line, right? The, an up level of your faith in God, maybe, all right, around the fifth, sixth, and seventh. All right, um, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Sign. Well, Cancer people, you are experiencing this new beginning in the house of your home. Now, it can mean a new home, but it's only a two-week window, right? The fullness of what is really trying to transpire will be the full moon in Libra six months later. But in the beginning now, the seeds are being planted for maybe a new home. And if there is a new home, Char Close loving it up, fresh, unconditional, new dawn, new day, new beginnings of the Sabian symbol. Characlo is like magic and creation and graceful spinning of a new home. And it seems like what Characlo is doing is gracefully spinning something to do with new home developments from the house of money that belongs to the banks, mortgages, loans, investments, your partner, your business and love partner, shared resources, and how you can bring those shared resources to an increasingly important desire to make something new in your home, from your home, about your home. Technically, you know, there was this movement of the moon through that Venus Mercury conjunction before the moon got to the sun. So the moon was carrying news from Venus, the goddess of love and money in your third house of siblings, travel trips, aunts, uncles, cousins, skills based learning, and Mercury in the same place. So those themes are kind of like in the background of this new moon. So it could be that some good of the good news that's coming through about your new home has to do with a sibling. I have a cancer rising sister, and guess what I'll be doing? I'll be traveling to spend time living with her in the two weeks that follow this new moon. So there's that overlay of the sisters, siblings, house, as it infused the backdrop of a new moon on September 25th. And I'll be going to visit her around October the 7th. You know, this energy of the moon finally arriving at the eighth, eighth house rendezvous with Saturn and the Vestal Flame. And with support from, you know, Mars in that sort of 12th house energy. Well... I would say that you're probably going to experience a really important turning point 
to concretize and make tangible and real enduring money stories. And this can look like cashing out on an investment, uh, putting into place some kind of new financing or loan structures, um, getting something done with your taxes or rebates from your taxes. You know, it's not tax season, but those taxes belong to the eighth house. And you can also be looking at generating new revenue sources from PayPal, Stripe, because you're doing business in international forests and shores and lands and look to some real momentum and concretize results around the 5th, 6th and 7th of October. We're healing those broken money and love stories already. Uh, and, and your broken love stories can also be through aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, because Venus is in that part of the sky for you. And um, if you want to learn, teach or study something as well, this is also something in the two weeks that follow this moon is trying to support you with. And lastly, Jupiter, he's making you lucky in your career. And this is excellent for Cancer Risings to rise to the king of the castle and be seen by the world as somebody who's a powerhouse leader success story in her career or his career. And that's just a part of what this moon sees because the, the fourth house is feeding the tenth. And so things that are freshly hatching in the fourth house of home are supporting this escalation and this climaxing energy of success and career go back to may what were you doing in may because what jupiter will do here is reactivate some of the may stuff and bring it back to the table for your career okay all righty and by december 20th he goes direct in your 10th house till the month of may of 23 and holy game on for you cancer risings you are making it happen in your career ambition and success all right, Leo, sun, moon, rising sign. You are experiencing this glorious energy of a new beginning, a new dawn, a new day. Terraclo, grace, spitting grace in the sky for you. In your third house of siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, trips, travel, short base trips and travel, skill space, learning, online websites, websites, communication. Um, so many meanings to that third house. It's a busy house. Anyway. Your daily work habits can be sort of there, but it's really more like the busyness of your life. Now, this new beginning in your third house, right, has some support from Characlo in your seventh. It's like your spouse or your business partner or your one of your clients can love you up and support you to develop, you know, more success in that third house. It's certainly a good house for online marketing, merchandising, and selling. It's ruled naturally by Mercury and the third house is that busy um, Gmail, email, phone calls, you know, things you do to communicate, share your message with the world, your website. So there's a lot of support from another party, a seventh house person. And around the fifth, sixth and seventh of the month, you know, the moon will meet up with a vestal flame and Saturn in your seventh house. And this can be a, a, an elder, a wise person, a person with great devotional power who is going to really apply their energy toward your third house success stories. Jupiter is lending his support in an opposition from your ninth house. This is definitely a learning axis, right? Ninth house is when you study something that you really want to learn that's meaningful to you, and it takes time, you know, not a weekend workshop. Also, this is a house of foreign lands, and Jupiter up there is, you know, quite capable of going on big adventures. And this is also the house of courts, and he's there, and he's the god of law. So legal affairs... Are going super well for you in the two weeks that follow the moon visas passports are going well travel plans hatch now will go well um and things to do with um your faith and belief in god uh, are in religion and mystery of life are also being highly activated in the two weeks that follow the moon i want to remind you that you've got a lot of support there from mars coming from that 11th house of good spirit toward that october 6th 7th 8th 9th or so when you get a lot of moon well, sorry, I'm making it too broad. It's really October 5th, 6th, when the moon is like hovering through the Aquarius part of the sky. And you're going to find that you are going to experience a lot of support from Mars. And Mars would be like friends who have favors for you, allies coming out of the woodwork. Venus is a goddess of money and she's in your money house. It doesn't matter that she's in her fall. She's still a money goddess in a money house. Just before this moon happened for you, Leo rising, especially sun and moon secondarily, uh, Mercury was pow moon was powwowing with Venus and powwowing with Mercury. And they're in a conjunction to the moon, right? Out of sign, but they're there. So they're the backdrop. You know, this is definitely a lunation that's going to favor you to heal any broken money stories right? Um, or earning stories that may plague you. And by the way, any self-worth issues as well. 
because we value ourselves and we have our values in the second house and our values by having self-esteem and self-value allow us to charge our worth or make our money in the world so some of you leos are healing that part of your story as well and money increases promotions raises or money positivity through um, women are very possible in your workspace in the two weeks that follow this moon virgo sun moon and rising sign there is a new beginning, a new day, a new dawn in your second house. Your second house is the house of your earnings. It can also be your vocation, voice, and calling. It can also be what you put in your mouth and what you eat. So some of you Virgos are quitting. You're having a new beginning around things that you put in your mouth. So my, my daughter's a Virgo rising. She's quitting the nicotine vape. She'll probably get real momentum after this new moon. Uh, but it will help you find new ways to do things orally. <laughs> Also, it's really good for a new start, a fresh start in your finances and possessions, you know, a new car, new, new thing, a new computer, something new may come to you because of this. And that's really lovely. And you have your own Venus energy. Uh, Venus is going through Virgo and the moon was talking to Venus during the build up to the moon, the day of, and the day before. So the moon with the Venus in the house of you, and then Mercury and then goes forward in this new moon and says, okay, from the backdrop, there are things that you were choosing, you were doing, you were applying to your life that are going to fortify your increase in your earnings value and your possessions. You are a part of this. I mean, Venus, when she's going through Virgo for you, <clears throat> Virgos makes you feel more beautiful. You have more sense of being healthy again or healthier than you normally are. And you may be looking at love from the lens of where you may heal any love problems you have because Virgo is about health and healing. And you, this is ongoing for you. And it's in this moon, it's baked into this lunation, right? So keep that in mind. Um, Jupiter, no. Yeah, I'll say Jupiter is in your eighth house and he is lending a hand from the house of inheritances, um, tax rebates, investment monies, shared resources with a spouse or business partner other people's money, basically. And so you can get money luck coming in in lots of ways here. One of them can be that you get some I call chunky money in the two weeks that follow this lunation. Or the fullness of this promise reveals itself to you six months from this lunation. I'll give you an example. If it's an inheritance story, um, Jupiter Go back to the first two last two weeks of May, because was there something to do with inheritances or financial legacy family money going on for you? But anyway, Jupiter could say, OK, someone's passed away. Here's the announcement in you know, two weeks that followed the lunation that you're going to be in the inheritance, but it will take six months for the estate to close. You know, just an example. Um, or you apply for a loan or a grant, but there's a lot of delays and it takes six months for the fullness of it to um, reveal itself to you. The other thing is, is you can definitely find some luck in the money story. So it's just a money luck vibe. Two weeks that follow the lunation for most of the Virgo people here, um, the rising especially. And uh, then around the, the fifth, sixth or so of the month, let me double check my notes on that because I keep forgetting how fast that moon is moving. Do, 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 do. Well, just because, just for you guys, you're going to get to see, watch the chart advance forward. Just because at this point, my I didn't write down the moon hitting the Vestal Flame. Now my brain is offline. So yeah, so she's hitting the Vestal Flame October 5th, 6th kind of vibe. Really probably around the 5th, but you'll feel it um, into the 6th probably. Yeah, so 5th and 6th of October. So the 5th and 6th of October, you are going to solidify, concretize something to do with money and work especially with support from Mars in the house of career. This can be a big change in your status at work. You may get a raise, a promotion. You may eliminate somebody in the workspace or they may be eliminated and it allows you to increase your financial value and money story. And um, you could also change the way you work because the work, the way you do the work you do, six house, you know, Zoom, go to the office, the office space of colleagues can go through a significant positive change. And you're going to see the evidence of that around the 5th and 6th of October. And then Venus is in a trine to Pluto baked into this moon. And 
as a lunation lord herself it simply suggests that you're really get, creating some financial power and financial luck but you could also get involved in a very intense romance and it will be very powerful you're the leader of it you're the one inciting the romantic direction with pluto in the fifth now pluto in the fifth can be forbidden love taboo love so be careful that this isn't a secret love story because jupiter's in the house of the secret love stories you know watch yourself if you're a virgo rising around whether secret love stories are part of your narrative and as a virgo or sign you know is that something you're really wanting to do because you tend to be wanting to ground things into permanence you know um but this is an intense energy and you may also have a, a clearing and going deep into deeper intimacy with an existing partner where you really have the the more difficult conversations mercury is a conversation god right venus is the goddess of the love story and this could really be having that conversation that you should have already had but it flows and it feels good and it shows up yeah september 25th add two weeks <coughs> oh my god she got water all right, moving on. Oh, we had smoke in Vancouver for like four days, <coughs> forest fires. And I swear, I tried to not go outside and had an air purifier, but I still feel kind of raspy. Well, then I also had, think I had COVID. So between the fires and the COVID, what the fuck? Excuse my language. All right, so you're not supposed to swear, right? Oh, on YouTube. But you know something? There's also something to be said about authenticity. Sorry, I got to go by hour. Libra, sun, moon, rising. Uh, this is a lunation that belongs to you. You are Libra. This is happening in the house of your body. It's a new beginning on your physical health front. It's a new beginning in a sense of who you are and what your identity is in the world. It's like you're redefining yourself. Six months from now, when this is a full moon in Libra, you'll know what I really am talking about. Also, if you go back to May, the first two weeks, last two weeks of May, last 2022, there may be some closer to this redefinition of self because you're redefining yourself through the lens of another person. That was Jupiter in your seventh house of other people and that could have been a business partner a love partner a client a, you know something like that somebody in your other space that's significant maybe around the last two weeks of may right they were in your face kind of thing and now you are experiencing this yet again during this two weeks that follow the september 25th lunation new moon and you know this is an energy of seeing like opportunity in the difficulty that may came, come from another person. Jupiter rules contracts and agreements, vows and oaths in the seventh house. I mean, we make those vows there. And so this person's, you know, maybe gnarly tension with this, this person, anybody who's Jupiter in your sevens is going to be very commanding in Aries, right? Trying to be the bold, brash, commanding, commander in chief, client, audience, other person, whatever. And you're having to deal with this during this lunation and the follow in the two weeks that happen but you can also get lucky opportunities to other people in the area of the others that you associate with you know the the moon was powwowing with venus and mercury in the house of past lives and your deep subconscious and your own self-sabotage your own self-undoing and getting what kind of information that moon needed to, to relay to this new moon sun like the to take it to the sun to the soul to the king soul so you definitely were doing some soul work consciously or unconsciously right in the day before and the day of the, the lunation and this soul work is very precious and it's very deep and you know venus is your ruler in the house of past lives and soul work stuff and self undoing self habit sabotaging shit getting cleaned up now you know women who don't have our back you know classic thing you know venus in the 12th house is like hidden enemies who are women well yeah so you may have been dealing up some of that in the precursor to this new moon of september 25th just quite possibly that is some of that pushback from the seventh house because you know there's that venus in the house of hidden enemies but you get opportunity and growth by confronting these situations including your own sabotage addictions and bad habits with this Venus in the 12th, in a trine to Pluto in the 4th, this can involve how you undo, unravel, un, un, un release your stuff from your mother's side of the family, from your relationship to your parents, from your family of origin, from your house of your ancestors. 
you know, what are you carrying that doesn't belong to you? What are you shouldering that is not for you to carry that was your mother's burden or your mother's mother's burden or your family of origins burden or your ancestral line burdens? There's definitely a powerful soul work deburdening going on here as you clean up some of that stuff so that you can create a more solid foundation in your life going forward. That's not hinging on those variables, eliminating the past that isn't yours to carry. Venus is the owner of the house of mortgages, loans, and, and, and stuff like that. So you may be also looking at buying or selling property and getting the money you need um, coming off the two weeks of this lunation. Uh, righty, around the 5th and 6th of October, the moon will combine with the Vestal Flame. We like to talk about her because she used to work with Characlo, who's sitting in your fifth house. And so this Characlo Vestal Flame energy is that there's great days, new beginning, new dawns, enjoy, play, fun, pleasure, creativity, artistic projects, independent business enterprise, being your own entrepreneur, your children and love affairs. Now, if a love affair co comes your way and you're single, it's deeply karmatic. Venus is in the 12th house. Past life stuff is burbling to the forefront. No doubt about it. Mars says also love can show up from a foreign land, a trip, a travel in an educational setting, that kind of thing. If you're a creative wants to publish books, this is a seed this moon is planting regarding book publishing. And Mars is your ally in your house of book publishing until next March. So if you are a Libra who has a book in them, you get writing that darn thing already. Okay. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. All right, moving on, moving on. All right, Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising. Okay, how much beer have I had? Oh, good. It's more than half a can left. <laughs> sure, I shouldn't be drinking while I'm doing YouTube videos. Is this against the rules? Hmm. <laughs> All right, so guys. This lunation is going to open up a corridor of clearing and healing all of those things that you know aren't good for you. You, The way you Netflix binge, junk fest binge, eat the Hagen dazs smoke too much weed, whatever you do that you know is actually self-sabotaging. You're going to have a fresh new beginning as you begin to move away from those things in a powerful way. Chericlo. New beginnings, new dawn, new beginning is a saving symbol. Chericlo, wife of Chiron, was also a profound healer, a miracle healer. So you could have some miracle healings because the fourth house, did you say the fourth house? Yeah, the fourth house, no, sorry. Because she is in the fourth house. Yeah, Chericlo is here at four degrees of Aquarius. So now that's the house of the mother, technically. So your mother wounds may be a part of how you heal. This is also the house of your ancestors and your family of origin and how you grow up. So some of those self-defeating clogs in your story may have to be rehabilitated by looking deep, more deeply at your family of origin stuff. But it also can be some healing regarding your home. Like because of Mars's participation later in the story around October 5th and 6th from the house of mortgages and bank loans, some of you may be looking at refinancing, finding a new home, changing your home, buying and selling a home, shifts around the home and finances that support that are in the offing for some of you, Scorpio rising, particularly secondarily sun moon. You know, Venus is baking in this kind of trying to Pluto and she is conjunct with Mercury, the new moon out of sign, but still there. I would say that you are also picking up some intensity around money and love stories and power around money and love stories that deal up things to do with friendship and love, collaborations and favors from friends, um, things to do with power in your local neighborhood, power in your online world, power in the messaging and communicating style you have. Pluto is trining Venus and it could mean a moving into a new neighborhood where friends are and you enjoy yourself more because you're closer to your friends and your social groups. I mean, Venus in Virgo in the 11th likes to have practical pleasures with large groups of people. So yeah, go to more restaurants, have more fun, uh, but also know that you've got this new beginning the fun is more sensible and less detrimental to your health right one glass of wine one toke of the the weed or whatever you do that kind of thing 
and favors from women are, are, are particularly opening up for you, friends, uh, women, friends, and allies in the two weeks following this new moon, especially supporting you in third house things to do with travels, trips, siblings, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Um, you know, the 11th house is the oldest sibling. And if you are a Scorpio with an elder sibling, you have some great support and power emerging in the two weeks following the lunation from the eldest sibling, not the older, the eldest sibling in your family. Um, Jupiter is in an opposition, but he's the god of luck and opportunity, faith and hope in your sixth house of health issues and work issues, work routines, the co-worker space. Certainly, if your health has been suffering from any self-induced sickness, this is a turning point for you. This two-week lunation opens that healing up. But also, you could also find yourself experiencing favors from the boss, favors from the people above you in the workspace. Good things are going to emerge in the two weeks following this moon in your collegiate co-worker space or with your employees if you're the employer. Hmm. Finally, I think I would encourage you with this new dawn, new beginning, Characlo vibe, which is capable of miracles. With that Pluto Venus trine, uh, what are your desires and visions for your life? Because Venus is what do you desire? Pluto is power. The 11th house can be your wishes for your life. And so wish big, wish powerfully, wish deeper, wish true. If you are a Scorpio rising, sun or moon. Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising sign. Energetically, you're going to have a new beginning, a new start, a fresh dawn in your 11th house. This can be a wholesale uh, revision of friends and allies over the two weeks that follow or of the visions and dreams you have for your own life. This also can be a new beginning of an uptick in your finances as you generate more money from the career that you are in or more rewards from the career that you are in. The moon was in touch with Venus, the money goddess in the career house just before this lunation, and she is conjunct the lunation from another sign. So this looks again like a reward, a perk, a promotion for a lot of Sagittarius risings in the work field, okay? And yeah, that's what it looks like. You may have to wait for the negotiations on all of that to wait for October 2nd, Mercury direct, right? Mercury's retrograde during this lunation, but it looks positive for you. So be patient, wait till October 2nd onward to get Mercury on board. Even more so wait till the 28th, 29th of the month of September because Mercury will be visible at least by then, right? He's invisible now as well. Okay, so other things to say. You know, Jupiter is opening up passageways through your fifth house. And this is your creativity, your muse, your inspiration. But if you're a Sagittarius rising, watch out for pregnancy for you or your partner. Depends on who has a uterus. But OMG, this is a classic fertility transit. And if you were thinking of having a baby, then this is a good time to try in the two weeks that follow the new moon. And you'll definitely get some new seeds there, you know, pre called pregnancy. Uh, Jupiter here can bring money luck and also good things to do with your business and independent business if you're entrepreneurial, and also good news for your children. And in the two weeks that follow this lunation, you get those things there. Jupiter luck, blessings in children, love relationships, independent business, creativity, winning the lottery. Uh, go ahead and play, but in, use your discretion. Don't overdo it. As they say in Canada, know your limit, play within it. That's a slogan for the national lottery here. Um, you know, around the 5th and 6th of October, expect this uh, energy to constellate where Characlo sits in your third house. And your third house is the house of your trips and travel, your siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews, and nieces, extended family, things to do with skills-based learning, things to do with communication. You know, you're definitely having something going on around the 5th and 6th of October that looks to me like you may be planning to travel. Um, and you may be planning the trip or taking the trip around the 5th and 6th of October. And if you do, you may be doing it for sheer pleasure and enjoyment. Um, Venus is the Lord of the Lunation and Chariclo is supporting that. Uh, you may also be connecting to this trip or travel with a significant other because there is Mars in the house of your marriage partner or your primary business partner, etc. Trining and flowing toward this travel that you may take. 
and uh, it can be to a foreign land or it can be local because the new moon is both uh, the sun is the lord of the house of foreign lands right so it can also involve foreign shores as well in the case of you particularly during the two weeks that follow this new moon and of all signs you definitely should be willing to go to the casino or play a lottery ticket but without expectation and hold it lightly in let's say september 25th at two weeks you never know capricorn sun moon rising sign uh, a new beginning a fresh start a new dawn in your 10th house now this is about your career and it's a pretty intense energy um it, you'll see the full fruiting of it in about six months after you're definitely having a fresh start and new beginning and, you know, this whole thing is like, what is it that is, you know, brand new that wants to emerge in your work and career space that you are going to be glad for, basically, you're going to be happy that this is happening, you're not going to feel grumpy about it. I mean, everything changed is a dawn of a new beginning and dawn of a new day, everything changed. Remember the Sabian symbol, everything changed. What is the everything that wants to change in your career space for a Capricorn rising sun and moon? And you know, Venus and Mercury were is are in the backdrop of this lunation. They were connected to by the moon in the day before and the day of the lunation before uh, the moon moved into Libra. You may find that there's something <clears throat> really powerful happening here to do with how foreign lands and foreign shores and love in and from foreign lands and foreign shores has a big role in your story and maybe why you want a fresh new beginning for some of you could be going to a foreign land and wanting to move there going to a foreign land and meeting a love there and realizing you have to change your career in order to accommodate the love um having legal affairs regarding money and love come to a positive new beginning that also pertains to your career in what in the short term right in the two weeks to follow this moon you know visas and passports and bureaucracy things like getting a visa or getting you know green cards and stuff that can be very much the stuff that goes on in the ninth house so maybe your beloved gets a green card or whatever and then you guys can travel or the visas finally come through for something with a partner capricorn rising you know venus is baking in a trine from pluto that you have been plutonianized since 2008 pluto moving through the house of you you have been powering up to your most authentic true deep self owning real power, learning how to wield real power. And this is now you wielding that real power around ninth house matters. Venus here is like, what is it? Is it money or love in foreign lands? Is it money and love with higher education? Is it money and love to do with your soul's deepest meaning of your life, your dharma? And this moon wants to support that, but there is a new beginning in your workhouse. So some of you might just be new beginnings and endings go together, leaving the workspace, right? Um, you do have around October 5th and 6th, some financial interesting developments, concretizing, making tangible financial opportunities or gains through the second house connected to the career house. And um, Charcoal is overlooking that and she's goddess of miracles and graceful spinner of new financial opportunities. So look forward to that around the 5th and 6th of October. And then finally, um, you know, that time of 5th and 6th of October, like Mars is definitely saying, yeah, we're going to work out this financial opportunity. It involves coworkers, colleagues, employees, workspace, env environment, and health and healing. Uh, maybe you take a medical leave and then you get more money because, you know, I don't know, whatever, something like that. But it's all positive. Um, you know, a lot of Capricorns have surgeries ongoing because of Mars in the house of sickness. And this he won't leave there until next March. So expect you'll have retrograde um october 30th to um, january 12th might have to go back and redo a surgery that you've had since mars got here august 20th just pay attention to that as well but um jupiter in the fourth house is trying to expand your home bring more joy to the home more fun to the home more, more expansion and faith and goodness in your home but he's retrograde and he won't be in direct motion till the third week of november yet in this lunation he sort of says I want to bring you a fresh start in work and bring you expansion in your home. Let me serve you. How can I do that? Likely you'll see some of the goodies. Uh, go back to the last two weeks of May. How were the themes of work at home uh, going on in your sky? Because uh, that's when Jupiter is on those degrees that he's in now. And then when he goes direct, well, forget about direct. When he goes back to your fourth house, December 20th, that's when the month of December 20th to mid-January, you really see this sort of landing in the expanse of home story. So some of you might be a new home and some of you it might be a bigger home or a more auspicious home. Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. That's me. You won't believe this, guys. 
if you want go back and watch my video about the sun trine Uranus, I actually said for Aquarius is what well, might be uh, having a jolting reason to move, <laughs> but it's flowing and it's good for us in terms of our love and money stories. And literally like three days after I posted that video, my landlord, and I said in the video, maybe my landlord wants her house back and I'm sort of renting her Pieta Terra in Vancouver and she wants it back. So yeah, that happened to me. Can't make this poop up. I am moving to Ontario. It looks like at least temporarily from Vancouver, the nomad transit, we Aquariuses have Uranus going through our fourth house. New moons, new beginnings. Sabian symbol, remember? A dawn of a new day. Everything changes. Everything changes in the ninth house. And that's to do with our belief, our faith, our relationship to the divine. It has to do with foreign lands and trips and travel. It has to do with book publishing, court and legal affairs everything changes, new beginning. Now, there's also in the ninth house, just FYI, just a little tidbit I learned recently. I'm always learning new things. It is a house of the third marriage. <laughs> I'm only bringing this up for me because I'm in a new relationship and it's going really well. And that could be the third marriage house. So for people like who are looking at third marriage stories, your ninth house is a house of the third marriage. And so, yes, a new beginning in third marriage energies for some of us in the two weeks that follow this donation, fruiting, fruiting into big energy six months later. But pay attention then to opportunities for travel because a new moon could be a new beginning, refreshing a screen regarding journeys to foreign shores and foreign lands. As well, you do have the sense that you have Jupiter in your third house powering up travel opportunities. Now he is retrograde, which is just going back to travel to a place you've been before. Go back to the first two weeks of last two weeks of May, where you're thinking of trips and travel. Jupiter in your third house is also connected to siblings, where you'll travel with a sibling. Jupiter in the third house is connected to um, skills-based learning and teaching. Like I'm teaching my sky reader course. Well, Jupiter is retrograding. Yeah, of course, because I taught it when he was direct and I made the course, I created the course content last may so i'm retrograding jupiter i'm reteaching a class i've taught before as an aquarius rising what could you be teaching or learning that you've learned before but this he's tying in with the lunation because ultimately the ninth house is your purpose and meaning of life it's your dharma it's your original medicine it's why you're here and what you're going to learn or teach or whatever or trip and travel to or sibling up is going to activate this truest purpose of your life the meaning of your life also you have this energy of Venus and Mercury in a money house. Now, the moon was with them the day before, the day of, the morning of this lunation. So getting messages from Venus, the money goddess, and your taxes, tax rebates, inheritances, um, money from bank loans, mortgages, credit card, leveraging money, other people's money, your spouse's money, your partner's money. And there's this like sense of this lunation, the backdrop is infused with this other people's money story for Aquarians and messages and news and information about it. And this will likely be unfolding over the two weeks that follow this new moon where you are going to see some positive, very blessed directional shifts around finances. Also, around October 5th and 6th, what will happen is the moon will reach the Vestal Flame in Saturn and be participating with Characlo herself, the one who is trining the lunation at the time of the lunation. So there's a very good feeling for you guys that you are going to be, it's a house of you, feeling more healthy, feeling more healed, feeling more psychologically, mentally, and physically well, Characlo. And in a sense, you're also receiving tangible, concrete, enduring foundational energies around love, devotion, romance, money. These stories are so active for you around the 5th and 6th of October. So if there's a relationship you're in, it will solidify. If there's a relationship you're looking for, it will show up in a concrete, tangible way. Maybe because you're on a foreign land trip and you meet the person in an educational setting. You, this is very devotional and dedicated love. It wants to go the distance. Mars in the house of romance and sexuality is a very verbal Mars, by the way, because uh, he likes to talk in Gemini. 
a strong talker is fortifying this new love story. This is really good for Aquariuses like me who have an independent business as well, who are entrepreneurs. This new, this kind of October 5th and 6th shows a like nice bump of success regarding entrepreneurial endeavors and tangible rewards, financial and other wise, you know, enjoyment as well. For a profound ability to deliver messages October 5th and 6th into the world with your business projects. If you're an Aquarius rising and you are thinking of... Um, having children. Mars here is putting a lot of momentum in this part of your sky. It could look like a pregnancy, but just be careful. Mars isn't the best guy to have in a pregnancy house. He does rule miscarriages, but it's a trine to your ascendant. So I would say things like if you've had miscarriages and challenges with pregnancy before, this is the two weeks that follow this moon are going to bless you with healing opportunities to sustain a pregnancy. That's the best way I could say that. Okay. And last, 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 but not least, Pisces, sun, moon, and rising people, you are having a new moon in your money house. Your eighth house is your spouse's money, your business partner money, your bank loans, your credit card debt, your mortgages, your inheritances, even your partner's money from his inheritances. And all of that is highly refreshing as a powerful, you know, new dawn. And everything has changed beginning. And it could really influence where you live. I mean, I've been saying to you guys for a while, Pisces, are you building and constructing in the home between August 20th and next March 25th? Or are you changing and moving your home? Because that's what Mars does in the fourth house, especially if you have your IC in the fourth house, your root of your chart. Um, I do want to say that this is definitely a moon because it's got Jupiter in the second that gives you the money you need when you need it. I mean, Jupiter in your second is like the, uh, the well that runs dry will always fill back up. Fairy Godfather saves financially at the last minute. So all of a sudden there's a sense of financial well-being that can occur in the two weeks that follow the moon. And you also could find yourself um, getting some support here from Venus in your seventh, trining Pluto in your 11th. The energy of this is favors from people who are powerful that bless you, like other people coming in to give you opportunities around money or love. Certainly Venus here can bring a powerful new love story through your friendship circles if you're a single Pisces. You know, introductions at group events or in social groups and social settings, very possible in the two weeks that follow for single Pisces. Existing relationships level up to new levels of intimacy and connection, but also potentially want to involve other people and move into a more sociable stage of relating. Um, I do want to say that the fifth and the sixth for you around that time, you're going to want to make tangible concrete shifts regarding your own self-sabotaging habits and patterns and ancestral line junk time to clear out the family of origin beliefs time to dig into your, your, you know, the house of the ancestors and eliminate around the fifth and sixth of October, what is holding you back because you can really clear out some massive karmic junk, some massive ancestral junk in your closet with great dedication and devotion around the fifth and sixth of the month of October. Charclo is moving through until 2000 and oh goodness gracious 2028 I believe 21 to 28 your 12th house for a lot of Pisces with Charclo this magical spinner of graceful spinner a magical miracle unconditionally loving energy you're looking at enlightenment you're looking at transformation and re really healing deeply healing your karmatic content of your sky healing your um own deep unconscious patterns that do not serve this life for you that create unnecessary complications and sabotaging strategies already so that's my story for you i'm sticking with it thanks for listening if you're new to my channel if anyone is just here for the first time and you're listening on my youtube as well because i like to do the premieres like and subscribe hit the bell for notifications don't forget um to check out my sky reader course. I think anyone who wants to learn astrology, I'm so excited to teach it. I already taught it once and I've learned how to teach it even better by uh, knowing where I was going too fast and how I can make it more simple. Uh, I've got a lot more, um, what do you call it? Like mm, assets to use to teach it with you, including Kelly Bravati, who will be co-teaching with me a couple of the modules and helping support the process. So we have two astrologers showing you how to read your sky so that you can time your best life. Okay. So take care. Thanks for listening. And I will see you on the next video, the Mercury Kazemi video. Ciao, ciao.